Well, let's stay with this. We can speak to Marco Papic, a senior analyst at Straffle. That's a publisher of global intelligence material. He's speaking to us on the line from Texas. Marco, it's, it's impossible to justify what happened in Norway, but Breivik is saying that this was his stance against the multiculturalism that was favoured by the Norwegian Labour Party. Is this some kind of horrific culmination of a move against immigration that seems to be going through Europe? Well, first of all, good morning and thank you for having me on your show. I would just say that uh, the move against anti-immigrants uh, and towards policies of xenophobia, if you will, uh, really appear uh, at the turn of every recession in Europe. So this is not in any way really a unique atmosphere right now in Europe. Uh, therefore, it's not really clear uh, that it's any different than it was after previous recessions and that it should have motivated this individual um, in any way really uh, differently from other periods of European history. So where do you think he's taking his motivation from then? Well, I would say that one interesting thing that has occurred over the past five years is the progression of the extreme far right into the mainstream. You have many, many parties that have either entered government or are supporting majority, minority governments throughout Europe. And what this has done is that it has forced people like Marine Le Pen to really clean up their image. So she's, for example, uh, espousing anti-Eurozone policies that have nothing to do with some sort of a uh, global Jewish conspiracy. They're based on facts, on economics, um, on policy. And this move to the moderate center ground, political center ground, has forced many of the former adherents of these extremist parties to, to the fringe. You have many more individuals who are no longer part of a group uh, because the group has had to moderate. Uh, and therefore, they're left with, the, with their own extreme thoughts and they're left to plot. In essence, they're no longer moderated by the extreme far-right parties. So are you suggesting that they then act alone or, as Breivik was saying, that he is part of a cell, that there are two other cells working alongside him? They're most likely working alone and there could be other cells. The point is, though, that the most extreme individuals are being pushed out of what used to be an extreme far right. That extreme far right has become part of the mainstream. A very similar process happened in the 60s and the 70s when many uh, Marxists and communists became essentially social democrats and are today the leaders of Europe. Uh, as, as those moderates left the extreme fringes of left-wing uh, parties, uh, those who were truly extreme and who were truly ideologically poor, pure uh, left and formed their own extremist organizations that were far more on the fringe than the, than the left-wing um, parties were. And you had, of course, the wave of terrorism in the 70s. And this could very well be happening today simply because the extreme far right has become more legitimate and has become more part of the political mainstream. OK, Marco, we have to leave it there, but thank you for your insight. Marco Papic, a senior analyst for, at Straffle, which is a publisher for global intelligence material. Right, let's get some of the day's other news, because, Sharanjeet, the clock is ticking in the United States.